Yo guys, welcome back to the fifth and final part of this tutorial series on continuous integration and continuous deployment. Now in this clip, I want to talk about the idea of production. So having sort of finishing this series off and just sort of, you know, we've done a deployment through from source to, to build to staging. I want to add in the production environment there and go through the idea of what I would, you know, want to see from a developer perspective of, you know, doing a pull request, getting that checked and, you know, having that deploy all the way through the pipeline. So I want to wrap all of that up. So we'll jump straight into it. And here we have our pipeline that we left off in the last clip. So we haven't run our test phase yet. We sort of swapped that out with the build because a test for us makes more sense with a Flask application because we're not really needing to sort of build and compile any sort of static binary or something. We're just sort of able to do some tests and then pass the source code along to the next phase if those tests pass. So the first thing we want to do before we even add the production environment is sort of do a pull request and see if we're able to sort of get the test build running and sort of see how that works. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have my source code over here um, and what I'm going to do is sort of make a change in here. So down the bottom in the web application, um, there's a section that says this is Flask Arena. Um, so I'm going to backspace these exclamation marks and say um, this is the best Flask Arena. So just a, sort of a simple change down the bottom here, um, which we should be able to see to ensure that our um, code base has been updated and stuff has changed. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add this in uh, under a separate branch. So we can see that our index has been changed here. So what we're going to do is check out and we'll do a branch on dev uh, or just a feature. So I'm adding in this awesome feature. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to do is just add this all in because I've added in just that one file and that's fine. Um, and then let's just commit this in. So I could have done that in the same message, but you know what, that's fine. Uh, let's just say, so updating, uh, the strong tag to, um, have a better name in index template. Okay, cool. So I'll push this up. Uh, oops. Yeah. I need to set the upstream. So just like this to the origin dev branch. So the idea here is that I'm going to push this into a new branch, right? Because I'm all, all the development work I'm doing, I don't want to do that on the master branch, right? I want to do this in a, in a feature branch as such. So if I jump over to the repository now, I can see that I have a, uh, you know, your recently pushed branches. So what I want to do is compare this to the master branch and do a pull request into the master branch. So you can see here the changes. So this is the strong Flask Arena down here with the double exclamation mark. And now you can see this is the best Flask Arena. So I'm happy with this. Um, I'm going to create a pull request here and have my colleagues check this, but also the CI system check this, right? Because remember that we have a webhook on our GitHub repository. We saw that in the first clip when we set this up. Now that webhook is going to call out and actually run the test phase of our pipeline now and give us feedback on that. So we should be able to see this update here in a moment where it actually shows us all about that and what's happening and everything. So you can see that's updated here now and it says all the successful checks have passed. So we have one successful check. So if I click here on show all checks, I can see that the build succeeded for Project Flask Arena. I can see code build has actually run and you get actually a little nice tick here saying that it's completed those tests successfully. Now you can click details here as well and that'll whip you straight over to the code build management console and you can see all the details about that run. So I can see that it actually passed those tests and everything looks good. So I know that, you know, it's actually pretty good and it's integrated nicely into the master branch and things have not broken. So it's actually going to work well. Um, and this again is so important, you know, for your test suite, right? You build a extensive test suite so that you know and you have the confidence that this is going to work 100%. So that's really the idea here. Um, and I know that I didn't break anything by changing that. So uh, of course, what I can do now is merge this pull request. Uh, and when I merge this pull request, that should kick off the continuous integration and deployment pipeline through a uh, code pipeline. And we should be able to see it go through all of those phases. So if we flip back over to code pipeline, um, you can see it's already gone into blue and it's already building now. So we know that straight away, it's just like, hey, the upstream uh, source has changed. I'm going to go and now uh, grab this source down and go through the pipeline. So the first thing it's going to do is test. And, you know, we did just do a test as well in the pull request phase, but it's important to be safe rather than sorry. You know, you want to have a test once it's merged to master as well as a test in the pull request phase. You need to have both because you want to make sure that um, that those changes that were in the pull request were exactly the same as what's being built in master at this time. And you also want to have that level of assurance where you know that it's tested again right before it goes into the staging environment. 
So that source part is done there and we're going to hit the test phase now uh, and that's going to go through into the test phase and then we're going to go have it into the um, deployment phase and it's going to do another blue green deployment like we went through in our last clip. So what I'm going to do now, what, you know, while this is happening, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. this is, I know this is going to sort of work because we've tested out our deployment aspect before. I'm going to edit our pipeline here and we're going to add in our production environment. So I'm just going to add another stage on the bottom here. I'm just going to click this and I'm going to type in production. So what I did just before the clip started is um, in code deploy, all I did was just make another deployment group called Flask Arena Production. So that's the only difference, right? Because we never want to build or test, you know, two different things. We always want to build and test the same thing, but deploy to multiple environments, right? So that's the idea here. Um, so all I need to do in here is go into action um, and I'm going to have a deploy and action name is just going to be production. We can make it whatever we want. Um, and I'm going to choose code deploy again. Now, application name stays the same. Like I said, it's the same application. And the deployment group now, we have two in here. We have staging and we have production. So I'm gonna choose production. Now I'm gonna make the artifact the same artifact that gets fed into the staging environment, right? It's gotta be the exact same. I don't want anything, I don't want any differences here. So it's gotta be the exact same. So we're going to add that action in and there we have it down the bottom now. So we have that there. Now, one of the other things that we, you know, that I absolutely love about Code Pipeline is that you can have many actions on one step. See, before the, the actual deployment here, I can have an action or afterwards, or even at the same level, I can have another action. And there's so much about these actions that you can really sort of go into detail on. So if you flick over to the integrations with AWS Code Pipeline action types, you can see what can be done at each step, right? So you can have all of these different things like Jenkins, as we mentioned, Team Cities in here. Um, you know, blaze meter, you can have cloud formation for deployment. So you can have ops work to you, you can have like CI CD pipelines for your configuration management. Um, you can have SNS for the approval. So if you want to have an approval before things go to production, maybe you want to do that for your continuous delivery pipeline. Um, you can have a step right before the deployment to production where it just does a notification to an approving person. They have to click yes. And once they click yes, it will automatically deploy that to production, right? So that's the approval stage that you might want before you do a production release. Um, and of course, you can have an invoke action, action where you just call Lambda and Lambda executes whatever code you have in there. So it'll just pass it to a specific function. And that could literally be anything, which is what's so cool about this. You know, the idea of code pipeline is that you can really just have anything in here. It doesn't have to be deploying code. It could be 20 Lambda functions that get executed, you know, in some sort of succession to perform uh, some sort of software delivery cycle or whatever it is, right? That's the really cool part about it. So I'm not gonna add in that Lambda function in here though. I'll just be fine with this and we'll hit save pipeline, continue and save. Now you can see it's right down the bottom here now. So it's just tied onto the next section here after staging. So our deployment to staging is happening right now. Uh, and we, of course we can get insight into that. Um, and this was a good way to sort of see exactly what, uh, you know, we're gonna get back when we change our code, right? So we've changed that tag down the bottom. So we should be able to see that in staging before it even goes to production. So you can see the staging environment here uh, and we've had a look at this one. This is the one we deployed to in the last clip. The production one, of course, we've not deployed to yet, but I've created that here. Um, and you can get details on this. So if we check this out now, we should be able to see, uh, like we saw before, the blue-green deployment happening. So this should only take a minute um, and then our blue-green deployment for our staging environment will be done again. Just diving into a little bit of the detail that's actually happening with the blue-green deployment here. It's really cool if you actually have a look in the auto-scaling group, you can see exactly what it does, right? So we started off with an auto-scaling group called Flask Arena Staging. That was the original one. And um, when we chose blue-green and we said, hey, copy the auto-scaling group when you do a deployment, it went and just copied it and made a new one. And this was the one from, uh, from the first deployment that we did. And now what it's doing is just copying that one again, right? So we have all of those same settings. We have all of the same configuration. All it does is just copy it and just give it some sort of random arbitrary name um, that we don't care about, right? So it's a really, really nice way of making sure that your deployments are exactly the same and your instances are the same, launch configuration, everything. Just copy that auto-scaling group. Um, and that's, that's what blue-green deployments are doing for us here. Okay, so that's finished up now for our staging environment. You can see the traffic is routed to our new ones. I'm gonna go ahead and hit terminate and that's going to kill off our old instances. Um, and what we can do now is we can actually go over to our load balancer endpoint and check our application and staging. So navigating over to our load balancer endpoint for staging, we can see now Flask Arena has loaded. And if you look down the bottom here, you can see this is the best Flask Arena. So we know that our code has been updated and everything's working as intended. Our staging environment is looking good. So this is looking good and we're ready to push this into production. Um, but of course, when we edited the pipeline a moment ago, that was in the middle of a deployment. So it's not going to go push to production in this same release. We're going to have to do a new release, um, which is what you would expect. So we can go ahead and make a new deployment now. Now we can just create a release or do a release change from uh, in code pipeline here. We can simply click this and this will just sort of deploy the same version through the pipeline again, um, which we could do if we wanted to. Uh, and that's probably a good way of just sort of pushing that application again, just deploying the same release. So we can do that. 
So our deployment is going to go through our pipeline again, and this time it's going to go into production because we added that in at the last phase there when it was in the middle. So the change, when you actually hit release change, um, it's going to sort of take a snapshot of that pipeline and make sure it only does to that. So you can't just sort of add things in as it's deploying and expect it to go through. So that's going to blow, deploy through to production now as well. And our production auto scaling group will have the same thing that happened to it a moment ago. So since we released the change again uh, from the top here, you can see it's going to go through those phases now and perform that blue green deployment again in staging, and then it's going to go on to production if that passes. So this is a, a sort of the nice representation of that. Now, one thing you know that's really important to think about is before you sort of do your pull request and before you sort of make all those changes, it's really good to think about running the tests that you want to run locally first, right? So things like um, if I want to run my my index here, I can just run those tests here. So that that test that index. So I really want to make sure that all this stuff's working properly. That's part of the local development aspect that we talked about in the first clip, right? So from here, once I've actually run these tests and maybe I've run PyLint as well and seen my linting, then I'll make my pull request, which will also validate and go, hey, you did run the test and they do look good. You know, in a different in a different VM or a container, where you'll actually be able to get a clean building environment. So that's one of the benefits of doing that. Um, so it's really good to think about. You know, make make the tests run them yourself locally, do that pull request, get that pull request checked by your colleagues, have that merge that's gonna kick off your CI CD pipeline. Uh, and if you're doing continuous deployment all the way to production, you should have your application all the way into production if those tests were good and everything sort of came back from the staging environment. And of course you could have multiple layers of tests. You know, a really common way of doing this is you have your source control, you have tests that happen before the deployment to staging, uh, and then you might have your deployment to staging and then you might have some more tests. So these integration or acceptance tests that actually run on that environment. So maybe they actually do sort of mock database queries or they write mock data to a, to a container database or something that's just scratch, um, that's just sort of ephemeral. And they actually perform sort of like really detailed in, uh, interactions with the application and its dependencies. Um, and then based on that, that might, you know, if that passes, then you can have a deployment to prod. So there's so much more you can add to this pipeline phase and so much more that you can do to really um, make your application more robust and sort of more, uh, you know, inbuilt into the test framework and really, really detailed. So that's, that's a really cool part about it. So always keep that in mind and really work out how much test coverage you want to have, how much you need to have. The more, the better, mostly always. Um, so talk with your developers and uh, you talk with your colleagues about how to make the, uh, the best test framework that you can or test suite that you can and really get in the habit of thinking about deployments, right? Like there's no harm in doing 30 deployments a day. You know, if you can do small incremental changes uh, and you have a lot of uh, developers in your teams and they're doing small incremental changes, that's great, right? If you just come up with a way that allows them to develop those changes as fast as possible, that's gonna be the ultimate goal here. So it might not always be blue green, right? If you have applications that only deploy, you know, maybe three times a day to production, um, you know, that might be okay for blue green because you don't mind the extra time um, for the extra safety that you get from blue green. But maybe if you're doing 30, de 30 deployments a day, you might just want an in-place, uh, you know, deployment where it's very sort of quick. You don't have to worry about the new instances coming up. Uh, maybe you recycle your instances every week or something like that. That's fine. You know, it's immutable infrastructure is great, but it really depends on exactly your, you know, your developers and your needs for this sort of stuff. So just think about it. Uh, really, if you're focusing on doing lots of deployments a day, think about speed as well. You really want to sort of increase the velocity of your developers. So there you have it, guys. Our staging environment has deployed successfully, and now we have our production deployment in progress. So that's going to go ahead and do that exact same thing. So taking that code, deploying it into the production environment. And our production load balancer will point us to the production auto scaling group and we'll get our production uh, application being updated now. So this is a CI/CD pipeline, although a basic one, um, it hopefully it gives you the idea of how to build your own and how to sort of go through the idea of increasing the confidence that your developers might have in the tools that you're in your team are building or that you're sort of helping them sort of get their software into production in a safe, reliable and fast manner, right? That's what we're doing here. It's all about that. So please let me know below about uh, what you think about CI CD, code build, code deploy, code pipeline, uh, any of the AWS specific services for this sort of stuff. I'd be interested to have a conversation with anyone who's interested in talking about that, of course, like as always. Um, but yeah, until next time, peace.